What does it take to make a good photograph? You often hear people say, he has an eye for photography. What exactly does this mean? I will argue in this short presentation that to have an eye for photography is to be able to select an image from a plethora of other possible images or variations. To select an image in which you intuitively recognize something special about the subject matter, the composition, the lighting, and other aesthetic qualities. Whereas painting and sculpting require imagining an image to create or recreate, I propose that what sets apart candid photography from all other art forms is that it is nothing more than the practice of selecting from what is already there. Photographer Henri Cartier-Bresson, whose images you have just seen, famously referred to this moment of recognition or selection as the decisive moment. He has been quoted as saying, There is a creative fraction of a second when you are taking a picture. Your eye must see a composition or an expression that life itself offers you, and you must know with intuition when to click the camera. That is the moment the photographer is creative. If photography, then, is the art of selection, the question is, from what pool is the artist selecting? When a photographer walks around with his camera, sees something that catches his eye, and starts snapping photos, he is selecting from all the different vantage points and orientations of his camera, and if he has a zoom lens, from all the different degrees of zoom. These are the three elements that are selected for in order to form one particular image out of all the potential images in three-dimensional space. Ansel Adams famously said, photography is just standing in the right place. As the software and digital cameras becomes more and more sophisticated, this quote is becoming increasingly true. A modern DSLR can expose every photo perfectly with just the right white balance and set of colors. All you have to do as the photographer is select the right framing. However, what if you aren't selecting from potential photographs in real time and in three dimensions? but are instead selecting from billions of photos that have already been taken. In 2007, the internet giant Google added the Street View option to its online satellite maps. Hundreds of cars equipped with custom-made cameras with nine lenses have driven on nearly every road in the United States and other countries, taking photos from 360 degrees, which are then stitched together for a virtual three-dimensional model online. All of the following images were selected from Google Street View by an artist named John Rathman. These images have been shown in an exhibit titled The Nine Eyes of Google in many galleries throughout the world, and they can be seen on the website NineEyes.com. Many of the images are very beautiful, some are strange or disturbing, and some are incorrectly stitched together. All the faces and license plates are blurred out. John Rathman wrote in an essay about his Nine Eyes project, Within the panoramas, I can locate images of gritty urban life reminiscent of hard-boiled American street photography, or, if I prefer, I can find images of rural Americana that recall photography commissioned by the Farm Securities Administration during the Depression. I can seek out postcard-perfect shots that capture what Cartier-Bresson titled the decisive moment, as if I were a photojournalist responding instantaneously to an emerging event. At other times, I have been mesmerized by the sense of nostalgia, yearning, and loss in these images, qualities that evoke old family snapshots. At first, many people react to John Rathman's work by saying, hey wait, you didn't take those photos, so how can you get credit for them? However, at its core, how is selecting from billions of images on Google's online database any different from selecting from billions of potential images out in the real world? The very same photographer's eye, I would argue, is necessary to select the pearls from Google Street View. Cartier-Bresson's concept of the decisive moment, I propose, is just as relevant to John Rathman's work. Indeed, Rathman directly cited it in his essay. A person with a less astute photographer's eye could browse through the very same streets on Google Street View, 
and fail to come up with images as compelling as Rathman's. The framing might be off, key elements might be missing, the decisive moment will have been lost. Browse through with an astute eye, however, and you can produce images just as compelling as Rathman's. You can become a virtuoso of Google's virtual world, selecting fabulous images from the stockpiled billions. To test whether Raffman's images really are as striking as images taken in real time by street photographers, I presented a series of photos, some from Raffman's Nine Eyes project and some highly rated street images from the website Flickr, to a class with 15 students. I did not tell them anything about the photos, and I asked them to rate each shot based on how skilled they thought the photographer was, on a scale from 1 to 5. On average, the students ranked Raffman's Google Street View images as requiring more skill than the highly rated Flickr images. Virtually selected images, it seems, can be even more powerful than images selected in real time with the click of a shutter. For further evidence of the photography as selection model, let us look to a body of work titled just that, Evidence. In 1977, after viewing photos from the archives at NASA, the photographers Larry Sultan and Mike Mandel received a grant to put together a book of found images. With permission, they sorted through dozens of government and private research databases, including the Stanford Research Institute, and selected 54 images for their book, Evidence. The photographs are all extremely bizarre, some grotesque and some hilarious. In the words of the artist Sandra Phillips in an essay on the book, quote, Sultan and Mandel were fascinated by the chaotic, marvelous, mournful, and funny pictures of people engulfed by a new technology no one could understand but experts. Sultan and Mandel's book was a seminal installment in a new conceptual practice of recontextualizing found images to create meaning. In doing so, they deliberately undermined what were once considered pinnacles of the art world, narrative and authorship. But as in the case of John Rathman's work, it took an enormous amount of time and skill. Sultan and Mandel sorted through close to a million images from the various databases, selecting with the keenest eye only those images that were particularly striking, bizarre, and absurd. While Sultan and Mandel described their work as a poetic restructuring of images, and John Rathman likens his creative process to Brisson's concept of the decisive moment, all those artists are really doing one thing, selecting just the right images from a world of possibilities. In Sultan and Mandel's case, that world was a million old, bizarre images of humans documenting as evidence their latest scientific research. In Raffman's case, it is the virtual world of Google Street View. As Google continues on its quest to digitize the entire world from the tops of cars with nine-eyed cameras, perhaps other virtual photographers will emerge and gain fame as they sit and browse on their laptops with a keen photographer's eye.